Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Joni Young, if you're new here. Thank you so much for joining me today for this fun winter painting tutorial. I'm using a limited palette today, and as you can see here, I've got a dark charcoal gray, charcoal gray primed canvas. So I just took a regular white canvas that I got and painted over using a little bit of white and black. I just painted it all, mixed it up to this nice charcoal gray color, and then I dried it off. So now I'm ready to come in with the colors, and I'm just going to go over those right now for you. Titanium White, Neon Yellow Warm by Holbein, Mars Black, and some Sap Green. I'm going to begin this painting with my number 30 Filbert brush. What I want to do first is just create a soft mood in the background, some warm light coming from a moon, and I'm going to use a little bit of the Neon Yellow Warm for that with the white. Then I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to come in with some sap green and black, maybe a little bit of that yellow for parts of my trees. Then I'll come over top, add the snow and whatever else um, I happen to decide to add along the way. I'm painting this intuitive for you guys right now, so I hope you enjoy. Before we get started, I'll just quickly ask you guys to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's free, and that way you don't miss out on any of my tutorials. I've got so many here on my channel. Uh, I'm just really excited about teaching. I'm passionate about painting, and I love showing you all how to unlock your um, own creativity. So let's begin. I'm just going to get my number 30 brush wet just a little bit of water on there and you can see it's just a quarter of the way down the brush a little bit wet and then i'm going to take some of this neon yellow this is a warm yellow it looks more like a light orange doesn't it so if you don't have this specific color just use a light orange and i'm just going to go right above halfway mark down my canvas so not quite way down halfway. This would be cutting the canvas in half right in the middle. So I'm going to go just above. That way, when you go a bit above uh, halfway or below, you get more of a dramatic effect. You can see here I just added a little bit of my titanium white. And I'm going to go inside that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating some low laying clouds just little flat ones just lit from either the sun going down or the moon I haven't really decided what time of day this is yet i think i'll wait till the end of this uh, painting to decide that pick up a little bit more of my yellow and white because we're painting on a darker um, surface uh, this canvas is darker than I usually use um, or paint on. The paint is going to dry a little bit duller than how it goes on first when it's wet like this. So to prevent that from happening, I always add just a little bit more white than I normally would. So these are just some dramatic, soft, dreamy looking clouds here. Very low, quick little wiggles like this. You can use so many other brushes if you don't have this one, so don't worry. You can all paint along with me. Okay, I'm just going to continue to pull across, keeping it kind of brighter right here in this section. Now the next thing I want to do is just wiggle that out really, really flat. And I'm going to start right about here and just go side to side could be a path, it could be a river. I'm going to bring it right down to the foreground, making it wider. So by making it wider, closer to us like this, you get more of pers that more perspective. So it feels like it's near to us and then giving it smaller, smaller, and smaller until it kind of just disappears into the horizon. That way we get distance. I'm going to wash my brush out now.
And I'm going to switch over to a smaller filbert. This one is a number four. And I'm going to take just a little bit more white. And I'm just going to apply it right here. And then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and white. And mix it up and have it just on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to slide along here. Some brighter highlights. I have a feeling this is probably going to be water. I've been painting a lot of roads lately, so it's nice to change it up. Roads and pathways and staircases. Okay, and then again, getting it on the very tip of my brush. I'm going to turn my brush this way. I'm just going to catch right underneath these clouds. So it just looks like they're catching a little bit more from that sun going down. And yeah, I think at this point, originally when I was first introducing this video, I was thinking it might be a moon that I was going to paint, but it just goes to show you when you start painting, it can kind of just take on a life of its own and turn into something else. I think that's always exciting about painting too. Okay, so as you can see with a few simple brush strokes and only one color with white, we've already got something pretty dramatic looking. At this point you could take it so many different ways. Um, but what I want to do is start coming in with um, some trees and then I'll start bringing in some little bushes along the side and start building this painting up. Okay, so I'm going to use my number four filbert brush again and I'm going to take black. This is Mars black and I'm just going to start ooh, right about here. And just pull a simple line for my tree trunk. And I'll add a few of them. Maybe one behind. So when you want to look like they're, want it to look like your trees are farther away, you're going to start them higher up and closer to us to make trees looking like they're closer to us. Start them lower down and bring them up higher. There's a good simple, simple tip for you guys. Okay, some shorter ones and then we'll come over to this side. I'm just going to pick up the tiniest amount of water, okay? It just will help prevent that paint from drying in my brush and it just makes the paint glide more across the canvas. And then I'll paint one taller one right here. And that one's going to go off the canvas. It's going to be our biggest one. And I'm not too concerned about these trees looking see-through because we're going to be adding branches and camouflaging most of that, but you can go over them a little bit if you want. I'm going to add a little shadow at the base, have it just go 
going diagonally. And I'm just going to thin out that one in the distance a little bit. It would be thinner than the rest. Next thing I'm going to do with this black is I'm going to come around the edges of our river here. And add some contrast, a little bit more. It'll just give us a little bit more depth and shadows. The gray works as a really nice mid-tone, but I mean, you could just leave it um, gray if you wanted. It looks quite pretty, but I really want to build up some extra contrast here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is come in with my branches and I'll be using another filbert brush. I'm just going to use one that's a little bit bigger. Um, well, I guess it's in numbers it's quite a bit bigger. Number 14, whereas the last one was a number 4. And I'm just going to get my brush just a little bit wet again. Definitely don't want it dripping. I'm going to take some of that sap green, mix it in, maybe a little bit of, let's warm it up with that yellow. Now it's like a, more like a dark olive green. So I'll work on these ones in the distance first, and I'm just going to start gentle little taps with the end of my brush. Now as we start getting lower down, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure. Reload my brush again and I'll go to this side, barely touching for the top of the tree. Maybe this one's going to be a little bit lopsided. I love lopsided trees. <laughs> Okay, and we'll continue along. Now it's up to you how much of a space you want to leave in between your branches. Completely up to you. There's no right or wrong. Not too many rules when it comes to trees. I can make some of these a little bit fuller. And this is a lot of fun. I love painting trees. I've painted thousands of trees and I never really get sick of it. I think it's just because you get this little rhythm going with the filbert brush or the fan brush and it's quite satisfying. Okay, this is going to be our biggest tree on this side. So I'm going to use a little bit more pressure and a little bit more paint. Okay, now we'll go on to this side. And this one's going to be a little bit more 
close to us here, right? So I'm going to paint my branches a little bit differently. Because we don't have, we're not seeing the treetop, it goes off the canvas. this green along the side. This is going to give us our snow a bit of a frosty look. Like a minty frosty look. And you can hear me <laughs> rinsing out my brush. drying it off as well to get the excess water out of it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take that white and I'm going to start applying some snow. This is going to instantly change this painting and it is going to dry a little bit darker than this. But if you don't want to go straight light, you can gray it a little bit, tint it with your cream, black, yellow mixture. You can alternate how much of each color you add to your white when you do that. So I'm going over top of the branches, but you can still see the base color. And I'm going to make this, this one here a little bit darker. Just so that we have different variations of uh, light hitting our trees. I'm going to just take a little bit of what's left on my brush where you can go back for a little bit more, turning the brush sideways like this to add a little skip of snow going up the base of the tree trunk. And then I'm going to leave the black Get really close to it. Scumble in some of this color for our snow. Okay, loading the brush up again. And now we'll come on this side. Over to the right side here. And continue with the same process, pushing and tapping. Now, if you want to, you want to build up height and some banks on either side of the water, then just go up with your brush. Or if you want it to be flat, then just paint flat strokes. We'll have us a little bit faded back there. Okay, continuing along. I like this. This one has a little bit more green coming out. OK, 
Okay, now for this guy. It's a little bit different, so I'm gonna kind of use a little bit more of the edge of my brush. Sometimes I'm pushing on the side like this. Got a lot of green there. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more white and just balance that out. A little bit of snow down there at the base. Okay, just with a little bit more black in here. I'm even going to add a little hint, just a touch of that green up in the sky. Just wiggling my brush around. back into my black now and I'm gonna add a little bit more in between the branches and for my shadows I'm gonna add some snow to that one right there I'm going to take some green with my black. And add some darker shadows in the water. A little bit more green. Let's see where that gets us. If you don't like it, you can always just cover it up with more of that pale yellow. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more weight to this tree here. And then a little bit more on the edge of this one. So it's kind of gradually getting darker and not just one tree that's uh, really, really bright. So just added the tiniest bit of green in here just to tint it. That was a little tap to the tree top. Add a little bit right here that maybe a light would be catching. And then start adding some light and a little bit of snow.
And we could add some uh, rocks in the water. So you just want to do little half circles like this. Really easy to do. Different heights and sizes. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of my luminous yellow here. Take a bit of white with it and add some golden highlights. to the riverbank. And then back over to my black, I'll add a line under the stones in the water. Okay, so I think it would be Kind of pretty to add a few little stars in the sky and maybe some lights in the trees and i'm just going to take my number two liner brush here and i'm just going to dot 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 a few little dabs like that and then i'll take my finger go over them and tap around a few duller ones next to them. You can add as many stars as you want. And I'm just going to use this brush to make some smaller stones along the riverbed. Okay, and now I'm going to make some frosty lights in the trees. So just with a bit of white and that yellow, we'll just create tiny golden lights. And then maybe we'll have a little bit of light cascading down here at the base of the tree from the soft lights. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of let those dry a bit there and I'll move on to a few other trees. Just really want to twist and roll your brush and then have a little ball of paint on the end of your brush to work with. And just remember, you can change any of the colors and improvise with what I'm demonstrating and showing you today. Even adding colored lights to the limited palette background and base that we have already would look really pretty. I'll just add a few here because it just looks like maybe it's a couple, maybe this one too. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take a thicker brush, a thicker round brush. This one's a number five. And I'm going to get the same color on my brush. And I'm just going to create a little bit of a haze. So just creating a little soft, hazy circle around them. Now, if you're having a hard time, just pick up a little tiny bit of water and it always helps to, it helps me place, placing my pinky on the canvas, make sure that where you're placing your pinky, it is dry. So you're not going to wreck your painting, of course. <laughs> Um, but this really helps steady your hand. And you can just spin your brush around, creating little circles like that. And it's going to give your lights more of a pretty uh, misty glow to them. You know how lights look when they're outside? It's just so pretty. I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Again, just using my warm yellow and a little bit of white so I have a little bit of wet paint on it. I'll just redot that or redad that. And then what I'm going to do is add a bit more frost 
on some of the branches and making it look kind of frosty is just kind of dry brushing around with the same brush. It'll give it more of a wintry look. It's nice to build up your layers in a painting though don't if you're if you're in a hurry and you're trying to achieve uh, the layered look it's you're just not going to be able to do it with one stroke there's some paintings that you can do with one stroke paintings but that's not the style that I'm showing you today so and I'm just adding a little bit more light and frost trying to make my trees look a little bit more magical and making it look more like nighttime. I'll go over a few of these here. And I'll repeat again just in case you're just tuning into my video. If you're unable to get this soft, fuzzy look with a dry brush, just take a little bit of water. That's too much, so I'm just gonna add some paint and then I'm gonna mix it up and start taking some of the paint off. But because we have a little bit of water in our brush now, it can help release that little bit of transparent paint and that's what we're doing is we're thinning our paint to make it look transparent And I'm just going to finish this painting off by adding a little bit more. Same technique, dry brush that we did on the trees for the lights. I'm just going to add a little bit more to the sky here. Okay, well, I like this one just as is. I think it's very pretty and simple. And all we used are these colors again, neon yellow warm, titanium white, Mars black, and sap green painted on a dark gray canvas. You can paint this on a lighter gray canvas if you want. Um, it's gonna change slightly depending on what uh, color you decide to paint this landscape on. So if you're not sure, just experiment and have fun. I'm interested to see your versions from this tutorial today. And if you'd like to share them with us, we've got over 12,000 members and growing on our Facebook group. And uh, there are lots of other tutorials and um, early access available to you with special giveaways, gifts, contests on Patreon. So I'd love it if you want to support my videos that I make and my art. Um, you can check out the links below for that. The Facebook group is free, of course, and uh, I encourage you guys to join. I always love seeing what you guys come up with for my tutorials. You're all really talented and you all have it in you. You're all capable of way more than you think you are. So I challenge you guys to give it a shot, page along with me today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Take care, bye.